Yahoo, Prof here behind the camera. Had to shoot a quick video for you. I got uh, my new flash drives here for work. Um, specifically the Kingston uh, Data Traveler Locker G3. Locker Plus G3. I'm not going to use the encryption stuff. Why I got them was because they are metal and they have a LED, which for troubleshooting PCs, the LED is very important. If you don't get something small, um, like I actually really like these Samsung Bar ones, or Kingston themselves also makes a very one similar to this. Um, uh, these are very nice and durable. No LED though. Um, also no cap, so that can sometimes be an issue. Those I have in 128 gigs, because both those and the Kingstons, um, right here, these are the Bar Plus technically. Got them in two different colors, just so I can easily differentiate them. Uh, these are 128 gigs, more for data transfers, that sort of thing. Um, but check this out. I had to make this video because I opened this up and it just felt weighty in the hand. Right there is the Data Traveler Locker Plus G3. It's probably a little blurry. I'm on the ultra wide cam. Um, I'm putting just some lanyards I got cheap on Amazon. Uh, I can throw a link in there. It's like 50 for a couple dollars. But listen to this. Like this feels weighty in the hand. Listen to that. That, even these don't sound that good. You know, like, here. That, that's just straight metal. This just has a nice heft to it. Um, and yeah, I just didn't think that these were going to feel so quality. And look, they're smart enough. It does have a LED, right? Full metal outer. They were smart enough to put the lanyard loop um, on the side here. I use wrist straps. That's just so I can see that they're sticking out. Usually I'll wrap a piece of tape around it too so I can label them. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, the cap can still post even though the lanyard's on it. A lot of companies screw that up. And these just feel freaking, freaking quality. Like the other nice thing is for a lot of PC repair stuff, I don't need like 128's giant. A lot of these are just boot drives. So I got four eight gigs. Uh, they don't have a four gig. I would actually really like some of those for some older stuff. Two 16s. Um, Windows now is bigger than an eight gig if you need certain versions or versions that have more than one version. Um, and I got two 32s. Uh, that's the max you can do for FAT32 is 32 gig. Um, if I knew I was going to need or if I end up needing bigger ones of these, I will get them. But for now, I have those. Like Also, these are cheap, cheap, like say 10 bucks for a 128. Um, if a client needs one of those, like say, hey, I need to wipe this computer, they want to back up their data, I can do it to that and just give it to them and charge them, you know, for however much it costs. I'll probably take the wrist strap off. Um, though, uh, when I said I got a whole bunch from them, here, Oop, I'm covering up the camera. All right, Prof here. Ignore everything you just saw in that video, pretty much. Um, turns out those really awesome Kingston drives that I like, uh, they're encrypted. Okay, you might be like, ah, that's not an issue. It's like those old SanDisk ones. You just run that utility and it's magically no longer an encrypted drive. Nope. They're encrypted at a hardware level, the controller level. It's not removable. Contacted Kingston, went through all that with them, explained them like this is literally the perfect drive for me. Here's why. Do you guys make a tool to remove that? And they're like, nope, we can't. Because it's not like... It's not, they purposely made it this way, it's not just a fancy partition or something like that. That is at a, con, I believe it's controller level. Um, so it's not just like it's partitioned, kind of like those old U3 drives where they had like a boot partition. And until you signed in, it didn't go to other partition, but realistically you could access that other one. Um, not the case with those. So... There's probably not much use for them. I mean, if you guys know a use for like an encrypted flash drive in today's world, let me know. But so when I bought those uh, for work, uh, the seller was probably like, oh, hell yeah, because they're finally selling something for the first time in forever. Uh, but they all went back. Um, they're perfect physically, in my opinion. Like they even clunked and clanked. And... But uh, if I can't boot to them, they're useless. The other thing is, is in order to access this stuff on there, you have to be able to run that program. And it's a Windows program. I don't always use it on Windows. Um, 
I think there might have been a Mac one, but it's not compatible with anything recent Mac-wise, um, and especially M1, because it, it required like the 32-bit backwards compatibility or something like that. Um, so yeah, those had to be dropped. Uh, the thing that stuck around though was that, I don't know if it featured in there, if it didn't, they're right here, are those really slim flash drive cases, which we will go over. Let's grab though what I'm rocking now out of my work bag here. This is my backpack I've had, I don't know, forever, feels like. I love it. Oakley doesn't make it anymore. Um, it was like the Flak Pack XL or something like that. And they later made like a revised one, um, almost as good. Uh, but what I like is front small pouch. Then you have this pouch where you can put like notebooks in, like thin stuff, has mesh pouch. Then you have this one, designed like when I was in school, you'd put your textbooks in here. And in this case, I have my keyboard. I used uh, what was supposed to be like your MP3 player pouch for your mouse. And then back here, there's a big one, a big pouch for putting in cables. A lot of times this pouch back here would be for your laptop and it'd be padded. Not the case. There is a completely separate pouch on this backpack for your laptop. I stick my laptop, a mouse pad, and my iPad for work in there. Um, and it is suspended. That back pouch does not touch the bottom. And there's padding there as well. Uh, so if you stick your hand in the big pouch meant for your big thick books, or you know whatever big stuff you have, um, you can get under that rear pouch, which is how it should be, because otherwise you put down your laptop or your backpack and smash your laptop right in the ground. Um, so I love that thing. Some stuff is finally wearing on it because I use it. I mean, I use it daily now, and for a long time I was using it daily. But it, this is one of those things where if you buy a good backpack, guys. It does hold up, and I believe uh, Preston actually has, actually my girlfriend way back then, had one of those as well. Um, don't know if hers is still good, because I haven't talked to her in years, because it's an axe at this point. Uh, but off of that, uh, there's been a number of people, uh, a friend of, maybe Peyton, Preston's older brother, uh, got one of these as well. Um, and then Preston, later on, when he went off to college, uh, got the newer version of this that I would say isn't as good because it, it um, is missing one of these pouches. It still has the back one, I believe. Maybe this one, because it has the small front pouch. But it's kind of a combination of, because there's the non-X, or there was like the non-XL that was missing a pouch, but still great layout. If you guys know of a similar backpack layout that has that, not like a pouch, like I want to be able to just open it up and pull my laptop out and it's padded and lifted off the bottom of the backpack. Uh, bottom of the, you know, so you set it down and just go clunk. Um, here is, by the way, this is my work one. Eventually, those are my ones for home. So I just have acquired a lot more flash drives over the years. Uh, this is my work one. Sorry for a bit dim. It is nighttime. Uh, unlike some of the other videos where you see really nice diffused light coming through those uh, blinds uh, when it is uh, 10 p.m. Uh, you don't get that uh, So this is really thin Here it's that thick So like and then this holds 10 flash drives uh, I used to have ones that were this size and even thicker. They're actually thicker and they only hold held six so Here's the drives I end up going with. Same, uh, what do you want to call them? Uh, straps. But these are the same drives actually that Geek Squad uses. And I now know why they do, because they're basically the only good option. Um, you can post the cap, but because I want to use a lanyard, I can't post the cap. That's one mildly annoying thing. You can tell that these are made much cheaper, like it's cheaper on the manufacturer. Hamlet, what is up, buddy? You're interrupting. I don't think he cares that he's interrupting, guys. Um, 
You can tell it's a much cheaper design. Not like a, like, uh, cheaper for them to produce design. I say cheaper uh, in a bad way. But you can tell that's just an extruded aluminum piece with a cap and a butt on it. Um, these are Kangaroo, um, specifically the Flash Blue 30. So it's USB 3.0. Um, I have four 8 gigs. So here's a 8 gig. And to be truthful, for most stuff I do, 8 gigs is fine. Um, because they're boot drives. And then I'll use an external SSD nowadays to hold, like, I have all my tools. That's about 50 gigs um, on there. Because yeah, it's way faster to update that on an ex external SSD. I used to try and fit it on a 32 gig or 2 gig flash way back in the day. Then I started fitting it on a 32 gig flash. Now that pretty much everything sports XFAT, I just use external SSD. Um, but uh, so for the boot ones, I could go as I, ideally, I'd like to have 4 gigs. But they don't make the NAND anymore, from my understanding, that makes the 4 gig flash drives. That's why you can't buy 4 gigs. Uh, I'd actually like a 2 gig as well, too, because some stuff and 2 gig SD cards just for troubleshooting older systems would be really nice. Like the Nintendo Wii, for example, requires a 2 gig SD card, not SDHC, which 4 gigs could be either SD or SDHC for SD cards. It's 2 gig. Um, same sort of thing here. I also only cap at 32 gigs because most boot devices nowadays or boot drives are FAT32. Um, and partitioning a flash drive is a pain in the butt. Um, and also if you use like something like Rufus, it doesn't really think to do that. It just uh, grabs the whole size of the drive and formats it. And in most cases you need FAT32 for a boot drive. So now the other thing that makes these really nice is if you notice, they're not very big. Here is a big, this is one of the early USB 3, this is a Patriot Magnum, it's basically double wide, you can see there, or almost, um, technically those Kingstons are actually a little bit slimmer than this, um, but this is essentially the size of a standard USB port, and that's what I need for working on systems, because you need to be able to plug this in with like a keyboard mouse plug in or just on the back of the computer from a free USB port. And on an OEM system, those aren't spaced apart very far. Or it's always on the motherboard I.O., not like on a lower header or something. So you need it to be able to fit by everything else, which, you know, like flash drives, they might not be this big here, for example, you know, but there are plenty that are you know, this is that same extruded aluminum, almost the exact same design. Um, but there are plenty that are essentially that big. Uh, or, or at least bigger en enough bigger than a USB 3 port standard size to make it not, not viable. And then stuff like this uh, Patriot Element here. Um, I used to love Patriot drives. They like don't make them anymore. Or don't make good ones anymore, essentially. I feel like Patriot also did the OEM them for uh, Corsair. Um, they make a newer version of this. I have two on my key ring right there. I still stand by those, but there's probably better alternatives by now. I don't even remember. Those are the Tab. Patriot Tab. Um, which, it's full metal, whereas if you look at the element here, the very top, because they wanted to retain the LED, is plastic. The problem is, is they just glued it, essentially with super glue, and it would pull out. Um, eventually, they just, after the third replacement, they just replaced my 32-gig uh, element here with a 32-gig uh, tab. I did just re-glue with super glue, though. You can see some remnants around the top there. And this is one that I often lend out to people. That's why I have it on my desk and over here. Put my own cap on there, um, just because it's nice and small. Um, the other one I use often is this supersonic magnum because it's still real fast. Um, I can put a 4K Blu-ray here on here too because it's 64 gigs. Um, I've done that to, for my mom, like to play on her Shield TV. But uh, these are just here for examples, size-wise. Um, but yeah, so this is what you should get if you're doing PC repair, in my opinion. Um, I wish there would be a way to specify uh, SLC memory or something like that. 
um, just to get them, because I also have the MX. Uh, here is the MX, and these guys are closed down as far as I can tell. I don't know if uh, COVID did them in or because I haven't bought them for a while, but it's a M uh, Mach Extreme um, MX EX e MX ES. USB 3.0. These are the fastest, just native USB 3.0 drives I had found. They're SLC memory uh, for my personal stuff. And if you look, they're pretty much they're a little, little bit longer, but standard size as well. I would have loved to buy these, um, but the company, as far as I can tell, straight up doesn't exist anymore. So I'm glad I got two of these 32 gigs while I could. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that would have been my ultimate, personally. Um, and I would like to talk to Kangaroo to see, because I would like to be able to post the cap and put a lanyard on it. So, but that would make it harder to manufacture. Like here on the MXES, you can't post the cap. So, I don't know what uh, they might think of a way around that. Um, But yeah, so uh, from my opinion, or based on my opinion, um, and use case and that sort of stuff, I think that uh, these Kangaroo Flash Blue 30s, which you can get on Amazon, they are not cheap. It's like 40 bucks for a 32 gig, I think, or something like that. Still around the same price as those Kingstons. Um, unless you guys can find a better one, and remember, we're looking for metal flash drive. Um, I need to have a lanyard loop. For these here, uh, and it needs to have a activity LED. Um, and then the biggest thing, like I said, is that size. Now, for example, I do carry still these guys here. I have both a silver one and a black one, and these are the Samsung ones. Uh, these are available at 32 gigs. I have that's what I actually. Um, have at home here a whole bunch of them because I got them on sale at uh, I think like New Egg like it was three for something or they were cheap like real real cheap like these are less than ten dollars I think so those are the Samsung Bar I believe the Bar Plus which is the second gen uh, the first gen is like rounded out like a circle here. Much harder to get it on your keys, that sort of stuff. Um, these are basically a direct, direct like knockoff of uh, Kingston had ones that were very, very, very popular. I forget the model, but they're all metal with a loop at the end. Um, people saw those on people's keys all the time. Physically very durable, very small, a uh, little bit longer than this element here, but it was all metal, including the loop. They were very popular, but they're only USB 2. Um, I think eventually they came out with USB 3, but I think in the early days of 3, it was hard to get it in this sort of slim, small size. Uh, now, oh, and they did taper it now. So this is actually, uh, one thing about those uh, Kingston ones is you had to basically grip it by the circle and pull, like have your little fattier fingers go in the circle to pull it out. Uh, this one they did taper, so it gets fatter on the butt there, and, uh, and then it kind of hooks up. This is much easier to pull in and out. See, like that. Now, if you're running, like, if you, if, like, one of your requirements was, um, uh, like, LED. That's the main reason why I don't have these. Also, from my experience, they're not super durable. They are fast. They are blazing fast. But I have had, uh, one come bad and one go out. Now, Samsung has replaced both of those. So, like, hey, cool. Um... But, eh, I don't know about durability. Um, and I have had those Kingston ones uh, that, like, these are based on go out as well. And I don't know if it's because they're all enclosed or because they have to use higher density on the NAND chips because they have to fit it all in here, kind of like you would with this element. But this, if you're running this element, is just carry on my keys to have access to some tools. Um, I usually keep a Windows ISO on there. Um, or if I just need to transfer something off or carry something with me and make sure I have it and something small uh, or if I need to just quick pull something off of somebody's computer and bring it with me or uh, transfer between mine to theirs I always have something in that case I have 
uh, two of the tabs, which are physically even smaller, and I have a 64 gig as well. Um, besides, not just the 32. The 64 is XFAT, the 32 is FAT32, for reference. Um, these are the 128s. I think these go for, I think I got them for 18 bucks. Uh, they might go for around 20 now. Uh, if you're running Y128, when I've been saying standard 32, this is specifically for being formatted XFAT and being bigger. Like just transferring files, or I've run into multiple times where I'm someplace and somebody wants a backup. Like say if we're replacing their computer or upgrading it, they themselves want a backup. Well, I can put it on here and give it to them and just charge them 20 bucks or whatever it is to replace it and not have to worry. Whereas these, uh, you know, flash blues are much, much more expensive. Um, and, I, and I will have spent time formatting them for boot drives and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, use this for backing up their system. Uh, or if they just need a flash drive, you know, you just give it to them and charge the company and get yourself another one. So they're kind of, that's really what they're for. They may not end up staying in here if I need more boot drives, because right now there's four, four, four 8 gigs and four 32 gigs. I may need to add two more 8 gigs to this setup. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's why they're there. If I need to just transfer, you know, bring a big file with me, and uh, for some reason don't want to use my external SSDs that I've slapped together out of, you know, actually, like I upgraded my boot drive in my work laptop, made that 256 drive into an external SSD. Um, if I don't want to use that for some reason, or maybe it's full, you never know. Or, uh, like I said, another big one would be system backups where they want to copy. Well, that's big enough generally for most systems. I would say most most people's computers could probably even fit on a 64, but being that I'm replacing a lot of 256 drives with 512s, um, and Windows alone can be 50 gigs, I uh, and these are 20 bucks. So, you know, here you can see I finally figured out also how to label, because this is all elastic. It might be kind of hard to see in this lighting, so we'll get out the old, here's the old headlamp. Hopefully it adjusts well enough. You can see that's elastic there. Uh, that's just electrical tape. Um, if you, and I highly, this specific case I recommend, because um, I have, prior to this, because I have a lot of flash drives for home use. Now for work, I'm trying to keep down to one of these. Um, but uh, here's what I was using for home, was this big one. And I can just show you for, from a density perspective, this side isn't so bad. It had one, two, three, four, five. It's, here. it's actually horrible. I say it's not so bad, but this side here held five drives compared to that. So like, that's what, two inches plus? Now I assume they're like you, they're thinking you might have a fat drive like that. That's my second flash drive I've ever owned. It's a Lexar Jump Drive Secure, 128 megabyte. I had a 32 megabyte. It was a purple Lexar Jump Jump Drive. If you know, it's non-secure. Somebody stole it on the bus in like middle school. Pissed me off. Um, so the next one I bought was a secure one. Um, a little bit bigger as well. Because 32 I was seeing as a, a bit of a limit back then. Um, but yeah, 128 was massive back then. Um, yeah, but yeah, this, the, the space density of this, as long as you're dealing with either these Samsung ones, uh, or about that size, or, you know, like these King Gurus fit, you can tell, they fit literally perfectly there. So, and even this MXES, that'd be about your limit, I would say, the MXES, which is... Uh, a pretty standard size for a flash drive, like skinny, a little bit long, you know, that's not, obviously the magnum's not fitting in there. Um, but what you gotta do to label it is, um, cause it, it does expand and contract, um, but what you do is you cut a piece of electrical tape in half, like the, the width way in half. And then it works because on your drive, it's under the square part, and it would be under MXES as well. Um, and then underneath here, I have my drives. And then basically because there's a there's a flat side, 
I just name, I put a piece of tape. You don't have to use yellow. I would recommend uh, if you're using, I'll use a lighter color because then you can go and grab yourself um, one of these here, these zebra markers. Uh, super, super, super highly recommended. It's 0.3 on the, the pointy end. See, super pointy, probably blurry too. And then it's 0.7 on the marker end. So that's skinnier than your standard Sharpie. Um, but it's also oil-based, true permanent, unlike Sharpies, which are water-based. Um, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna move. Now you can see with that there, because it's in the middle, it doesn't stretch that much because these are pretty thin. Um, stays right there. That way I know what drives under there. Um, whereas like, I think they would go with the mesh before because you can kind of see the drive that's in there with the mesh. Um, I should note on the other side of this, odd, like this thing's super kind of weird. I don't know, like maybe they didn't know what you were going to put in it. But mesh here, five by five. Oh, here. This is what I wish I could just buy. More of these Memorex ones. These are amazing. This is like an eight gig. I've also had like, oh, this little is a five total megabyte. Um, and they had different sleeves that you could color code uh, that you would put over the top. This one's seen its, seen its, uh, you know, it's been heard a bit. But yeah, if somebody still made these, these are like perfect. Um, it doesn't post a cat, but otherwise, basically perfect. I don't think those ever made it to USB 3 either. Um, but yeah, a lot of the, even nowadays, you can go and buy a sand disc at Best Buy, uh, which is way better than the PMYs. And uh, they're like these bulbous. Now, buy the red ones if you're going to, because they're easy to uh, see, like if you leave them in a the system or something. I think that's supposed to be like for a marker or a pen there. Uh, there's like a cards. It's so like this side is basically useless. And then here you only have one, two, three, four, plus this big flap. So I don't know if they like didn't know this is labeled as a flash drive thing and it didn't help me out for years. But um, yeah, it just, these are a much better use. use. And I know I, I did it in this one big one because I wanted to keep them all together. Uh, I fit more drives in three small ones. This is actually more between these three than was in here. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going with from now on is these, and that's what I recommend you do. To be truthful, and I've shown this with my work setup here, that uh, you can probably make do with one, because that's 10 drives. I don't know how many boot drives you have. Um, I've also tried, like some of you might recommend using Yumi. It's been super duper 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 inconsistent for me. The non-UEFI version worked really solid. For me, at least. The UEFI 5 version is all over the place. Sometimes it'll boot to higher ends, other times it won't boot to higher ends. Um, sometimes it'll boot to X thing, then after the next update it won't. And they change how this thing works. It tells you you need FAT32, but then it only works if you format NTFS. And then remember FAT32 is limited to 32 gigs, so then I can't, and it's also limited to 4 gig file sizes which means I can't put on ISOs bigger than four gigs. A lot of my ISOs for like Windows install and stuff are bigger than four gigs. But it's just all these limitations. Um, and I'd much rather be able to just grab, like say this, this mem test one. Also, if I need to leave it in there, I don't wanna like have my entire drive held hostage just cause I need to go run a mem test on a system. Um, I know it's less convenient uh, to do stuff like this, but um, it's m better for me because I can go leave this in a system, leave the company, let it run overnight, and still have all my other stuff with me. That makes sense. Now, if you guys have had good luck getting Yumi, especially the newer UEFI ones, running with you know, your various stuff, like I'm talking Acronis, Windows installers, um, Memtest, um, it's that's the other thing. It's always v also very limited in what like it has to. They took out the ability to add ISOs that it doesn't have support for, so it has to be in that list. Which then that only eliminates like three drives for me, I think. Um, and that's if it works properly. So let me know your guys' experience with uh, it's Yumi Y U M I or Yummy. It might be. Um, 
versus you know, like individual drives here. Another thing you can try that I've had uh, somebody I used to work with in IT field do, and that is he would use uh, micro SD cards. Or back in the day, you might use standard SD cards and then an SD card reader because there are some of those readers that basically make it look like a flash drive. You're just basically using the SD card as the NAND. Now, for me, those micro SD cards super duper fiddly. Um, he found them easier to carry because you could have like two adapters and like a whole thing of those SD cards, and it would take up like that much space, or maybe two of these space. Um, I just find it too fiddly to have to pull those micro SD cards out. Um, and nowadays SD cards would end up being bigger than these. Um, and I don't know if it's necessarily going to be better. You'd also want to make sure you get those like high, dur high endurance ones because you're formatting these all the time more than likely. Uh, but it is an idea for some of you that are interested that you might not have thought of. You do have to make sure though you get an SD card reader that basically makes it show up as a flash drive once you stick the SD card in it. And Lexar used to make them for full size ones. I don't know who makes them now that would do that. But I mean, they had ones that were literally advertised as like jump drives and they were like really big, bigger than this. And they would take a full size SD card in the back. Like we're talking like the, when two gigs was huge for an SD card. Um, I could probably go over to my dad's house and dig one out cause he had one. Um, but yeah, so I, I label it with a half width of electrical tape there. You could, I'm using um, light colored, you know, like uh, yellow, orange, green gets a bit dark for the 3M electrical tape. Pink, gray, you could use white. Um, otherwise, if you go with a dark color, I would label it whiteout. Now the whiteout, even from the smaller whiteout pens, is going to be thicker than what you, or what you can do with that zebra marker I just showed off. Um, but then I label it on, you could have a label on both sides if you wanted to. Um, but I just, and this is slightly thinner than, um, what the, uh, electrical tape is. So you just place it on there, squish it down, put it in the crease, and then, um, cut it off with a nice sharp X-Acto or utility blade, whatever you got. Just follow the lines. There's, you know, like the end cap, the front cap. It's super easy to do. And in this case, you're like... That looks kind of matte, maybe you can't see in this light, but then what I do is because you still have, even though that's um, permanent uh, permanent marker, like oil-based permanent marker, it could still rub off because you're writing on electrical tape, which is PVC-based as well. So what I do to protect it is you just take a piece of scotch tape, put it over top, and then that way you're not actually touching what you're writing on. Um, and it's perfect for protecting this sort of stuff. So you just, I don't do that for these because it would make it much less flexible. Uh, the electrical tape is pretty flexible. Um, but on here, on the actual drive, so when you put your finger on it, uh, and I had ones at Geek Squad that lasted years and no problem. And this, especially because it's a flat surface, like you won't have a little lip peel up or anything like that. Um, that's my recommendation is electrical tape um, and then either do with truly permanent marker um, or white out and then put a piece of uh, scotch tape over top and I do recommend make sure you get like you know proper 3M scotch not that knockoff stuff the knockoff stuff does work uh, you know it's just nicer if uh, if you get the real stuff and then uh, you know with my biggest thing is I have I have almost all of these actually labeled like this the problem is, is when they were in this um, you can see here if I cover up the temp drive there, you can't tell. Like you'd have to memorize, or say if I told one of my coworkers, "Hey, grab out the temp drive," they're not gonna freaking know which one it is. So today I devised, because I was uh, I tried like a full width one, but it was definitely falling off. Uh, the half width works because even when the drive goes under, it, you're not peeling up the edges because it's not going beyond that rollover part there. So that's this is my recommendation. Um, at some point, I will probably uh, label the outside, especially because I have three of these at home now. Um, and I have uh, one at work. So I'll probably use the same thing, electrical tape on the flat surfaces. And then on the outside of this, it's pretty flat. It's not moving. 
I could also put the scotch tape on top of it. Now, if you weren't concerned about relabeling this, like you just want to label it Steve's or something, uh, use whiteout. Done. Uh, you could use a silver Sharpie. By the way, though, this is cloth. So what happens when you use like a silver Sharpie and not a paint is it will actually soak in and spread out a lot. So it's going to be really hard to read. Uh, the other thing you could do is just spray paint it. You know, that's pretty common. Um, or use paint marker. Uh, you know, I say use yellow paint marker because yellow is my color. You know, like that sort of thing. Um, here, and I can show you. This feels, there you go. So what, what do those drives do right now? You, you literally would have no idea. So that's why I was trying to find a way to label the uh, elastic on the inside. And uh, I would say it worked worked out pretty darn well. Um, hopefully this was of some use to you guys. I'll throw all this stuff that I recommend uh, down below in the comments. Uh, if you're not doing this professionally, uh, I would say you could probably get away with not, like just use the Samsung drives. Those have been decently reliable at home. Um, if not having an activity LED ticks you off, uh, maybe pick up like an 8 gig and a 32 gig of the, the or like 4 or something if you don't need as many. Um, they are a little bit more expensive. I haven't killed one yet, and we were running them at Geek Squad uh, for three plus years, I want to say. Two, two plus? A while. Uh, and those got formatted all the time. Anytime a new Windows came out, we'd have to make multiple. I had some of those my tools drives. I had which would almost fully get overwritten every time I would update it because I didn't have a way to just update the new stuff. Um, we'd use them for data backups. That's where we had killed some of the 128 gig uh, USB 2.0 Kingstons. Uh, you could just see they were... We overheated a bit there. Um, yeah, so I have had issues with those, but those were used for data backups all the time. Um, I'd say go with the Samsungs unless you're irked by not having um, the uh, activity LED. Then those King Gurus are the way to go. Unless you guys have a better idea, let me know. You know, um, or let me know what you use. You know, because I actually have a lot of older ones, some old SanDisks. Uh, that's what you saw those green ones. Those are from Xbox 360. Those are a gig. Those are they're not metal, but they're perfect. They're built like a freaking brick. Um, a lot of old sand disks. Uh, then I have a lot of uh, Patriots because they were really the only ones to do USB, the early USB 3.0s correctly. Um, they have them in, in decent sizes. Not the original Supersonic or the Supersonic Magnum, which was based on their Magnum, uh, but the standard, or sorry, the standard Supersonic, not the Rage, uh, which was also based on a USB 2 one. They just kept the design, but the original Supersonic, which was their original USB 3.0, perfect. I have like four of those, three or four of them. Um, wish I had more. Um, let me know which drives you guys use. And don't use just random ones that you get for free. It's going to bite you at some point. I can already tell you that I used to do that. Um, and like it's like 10 bucks for a good 32 gig. Uh, from one of those Samsungs. Just get a couple. Um, that way you won't run into issues like that. And that, that drive case, just so you know you, where they are at all times, is super handy. I think it's like 10 bucks or something like that. All that will be linked below. Let me know what you guys use, though. Maybe you got uh, Yumi working. I'd be interested in how, since I haven't had very good luck. But uh, hopefully you found all this interesting. I know I went on for quite a while. But oddly, this is, uh, you remember, I'm an everything enthusiast, and this is one of those things that I am definitely enthusiastic about. So uh, hopefully you at least found it interesting, maybe gain some new knowledge, or like, what the heck is this guy going on about? The, the random free one I got at this uh, convention is perfectly fine for running Memtest. Um, to be truthful for that, on a personal level, I still use a 1 gig Sony like memory vault or something that's ancient because it's it's plenty but i it's just what i use for that um and it's been that way for better part of 10 years that it's been my mem test drive um because i could just physically identify it so uh we'll see you in the next one hopefully you guys enjoyed this hopefully you guys will comment down below you can always hit me up on twitter i'm at the prophecist